morning students today we are going to continue uh, the remaining portion of wildlife conservation and management with the heading biosphere reserve what is biosphere reserve uh, they are certain areas protected for conserving the biodiversity for its sustainable use sustainable means long lasting use so biosphere reserves means certain a is a um, practice of protecting areas for the purpose of protecting biodiversity with its sustainable use at the same time it protects the biodiversity and also uh, we are using it sustainably sustainably without hampering its existence such type of areas are called biosphere reserves um what's the number over 100 countries about 500 biosphere reserves are there uh, till now then how this biosphere reserve that concept originated in 1968 uh, that concept originated in the biosphere conference organized by unesco unesco means united nations educational scientific and cultural organization and in that conference launched a program called the man and the biosphere program in 1970 and it constituted a coordinated network of sites in that uh, program coordinated network of sites means sites means actually certain areas well marked areas uh, representing the main ecosystem in the planet uh, so much areas are there and in uh, that total area uh, using proper uh, proper uh, techniques we are arranging which parts represents main ecosystem of the planet and those main ecosystem part of the plant are uh, uh, given a name that is sites so uh, that uh, in that program launch man and biosphere program and that program is it is a coordinated network of main sites site means uh, the main ecosystem regions of the planet and these sites later named as biosphere reserves in that way the biosphere reserves came into origin what are the functions of this biosphere reserve uh, and how conservational function to conserve the biodiversity at the same time developmental function also they are to um, support development and also to support it have to support research education and also uh, to exchange information uh, relating with the biodiversity um, in biosphere reserve three zones are there core zone is there means innermost dense forest and buffer zone buffer zone is that not that much dense and transitional zone is the entry point of a biosphere uh, reserve there is a, a beginning area of biosphere reserve that is the transitional zone means the, the zone uh, is that zone between that human inhabitational area and that uh, biosphere reserve uh, a transitional area so that area is called a transitional area what is the things peculiar particular with all these zones i will tell you now and before that i am uh, pointing one more uh, thing that is the regarding its law this biosphere reserve its conservation is done by uh, certain soft laws not that much strict loss so next we are going to see what are the nature nature relating with each zones of the biosphere reserves uh, what about transitional area 
what about buffer and what about the core areas first we can see uh, regarding the transitional area uh, this light colored yellow region um, then uh, look at these aspects uh, so in transitional area uh, research and monitoring is, uh, is uh, um, happening in maximum extent and nature conservation is not that much um, in full strength here in transitional area and what about economic development economic development the, the things that is where that can that can build economy that is going on in this transitional area and the recreation and environmental education also uh, there is possibility also maximum in transitional area so you only really need to uh, see what's that uh, this lines is it uh, showing maximum or minimum in the specified area in that way we can understand in uh, coming to buffer zone buffer zone this green area look here recreation and environment also uh, it also supporting there in that area also buffer zone also um, recreation and environmental education is going on economy developing activities are uh, not that much when compared with the transitional zone nature conservation uh, activities are more uh, in buffer zone when compared with uh, the transitional area research and monitoring uh, also there but not that much uh, extent as that of is as that of the transitional area uh, that about the buffer zone then coming to core area this darkly green portions so there that recreation and environment education is very less not that much supporting <laughs> economic development is not at all possible for supporting economy nothing is doing in core areas that means we are not at all disturbing the natural form of the forest in this course uh, nature conservation activities are giving more importance uh, in these core areas and research and monitoring uh, activities the activities relating with the research and monitoring is carrying out to a less extent in the core areas that's about the these three areas this is very important question for your uh, examination uh, regarding the three areas of biosphere research then we are going to see different type of biosphere reserves in india first one is nilgiri where it is located it is located in the tropical region of western ghats not garden western ghats system it is located in the tropical region of western ghats system what about the fauna which are the common fauna there common fauna means common animals panthera tigris elephants and other large mammals then which are the ecosystem type uh, it's there the ecosystem existing there is um, mainly of tropical forest and also mixed mountain and highland they are also present there tropical forest means the, uh, and those forests that is uh, existing in our country that type of forest are called the tropical for us uh, you may like this one next is gulf of manar where it is located uh, what about its stretch its area is about 10 lakh 50 thousand hectares and where it is located around in the southeast coast of india uh, in the Southeast coast of India and also across from this Sri Lanka. That is this extension of the Gulf of Manar. What are the features? Ah, it is rich with marine biodiversity. Marine diversity is very high in this region. And this Gulf of Manar is composed of 21 islands with estuaries. Estuaries we know is a meeting point between fresh water and saline water so estuaries are there beaches are there uh, then forest coverage is also there 
and so many algal communities, sea grasses, coral reefs, all are pres all are present in this uh, Gulf of Mana. Such a bio uh, diversity, uh, bio, bio sorry, biosphere reserve is this one. And regarding the fauna and flora, uh, a globally endangered 3,600 species, uh, 3, uh, species of plants and animals can be found here. And also very important feature is the endemic species. And endemic species uh, like uh, sea cow and also um, other endemic species, six mangrove also found here. An ecosystem of this Gulf of Mana is of islands, coral reefs and mangroves. It's already somewhat explained here. Uh, this is a picture of sea cow. Uh, this is a topographical uh, view of this Gulf of Mana. Next. Next, another biosphere reserve is Sundarban. Sundarban, it, it is located in the vast delta of Ganges. What is this delta? Delta means it is and this Ganges Delta is a triangular shaped land area. And that land area is formed where uh, at the point where three great rivers like Ganga, Brahmaputra and Meghna. Uh, these three uh, rivers uh, discharge to Bay of Bengal. At that point a triangular shaped landmass present that uh, landmass is called Ganges Delta and Sundarban is located in that Delta. Okay. Uh, and uh, that Sundarman's lo exact location within the uh, Ganges Delta uh, in the south of Calcutta and bordering the Bangladesh in the east. In the east, it is bordered by Bangladesh and uh, somewhat uh, south of Calcutta. What's the speciality of Sundarban? It is the largest continuous mangrove area. Mangrove forest, we know, is the largest continuous mangrove forest. Largest mangal diversity. Mangal means mangroves, other name except mangal. Um, uh, mangal diversity that we can. I will show you that mangal diversity, huge mangal diversity exists there. It's very good, very significant, and supports huge biodiversity also. And 81 mangal plant species are found in the Sundarban and provide habitat for very threatened royal Bengal tiger that is Bandera tigris tigris. He provide a, a very good habitat for this Bengal tiger and the core area of this Sundarban is designated as World Heritage Site. World Heritage Site means it is recognized as very significant, significant place because of some uh, because of the presence of some valuable species of plants or animals or anything like that. So, uh, simply it means it's a very significant uh, area, important area um, with regard to its conservational value. Such areas are called the World Heritage State. I, um, regarding this, I will explain to you later in the coming slides. Okay, next one. Nanda Devi. Nanda Devi is also uh, another biosphere reserve uh, where it is located in the Himalayan mountains in the northern part of country. Uh, in, uh, in the northern part of the country, in the Himalayan mountains, Nanda Devi is located. What else? It features very, 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 very scenic uh, area, very beautiful, very picturesque area. And the core area called Nanda Devi and Value of Flowers National Park is another World Heritage Center. Uh, here I am explaining that uh, once more. World Heritage Site, I already told you that's why a place that is not a fair or specialized because of uh, um, uh, its cultural, historical, or scientific values and is identified or uh, recognized as a World Heritage Site by. United Nations of Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. They are notifying such areas uh, as World Heritage Site. I, if any area notified as World Heritage Site, that means it is very much, very, very, very much significant with respect to its cultural, historical or scientific uh, aspects. 
and that area is very beautiful because of the meadows of endemic alpine flowers meadows means a large area covered with wild flowers ah uh, here that uh, coverage is mainly of alpine flowers oh, very beautiful flowers and giving an outstanding natural beauty for this place this nanda devi then national parks national parks very important area uh, mo um, most of the time you are uh, in your examinations questions are coming regarding national parks sanctuaries what is national parks what is sanctuaries or distinguish between national parks and sanctuaries all those questions is very um, very very frequently very frequently such questions are coming for your examination what is national park they are relatively larger areas with a particular defining characters larger area with defined characters and it consists of regarding more about this national park it consists of one or more several ecosystem national park consists of one or more several ecosystem having scientific educational and recreational value three things scientific educational and recreational value and is not subjected to any type of human exploitation we have proper registration and uh, visitation is allowed only under specific terms and conditions this is the first national park yellowstone national park which established in 1872 which is the largest national park in the world that is the northeast greenland national park in 1972 and uh, it's consists mostly of sea this is a picture of yellowstone national park and this is the northeast greenland national park it's mostly consists of sea next national parks in india india's first national park which one this haley national park yeah it's uh, started in 1936 and it is now renamed as jim corbett national park and the number of uh, national parks may uh, how many are there uh, over over 100 national parks are presently present uh, presently uh, present in india its total area um, total area covered by this 100 over 100 national park is of 1.21 percentage of india's total surface area and uh, some of the important national parks in india are selan valley national park periyar national park uh, madikattan shola national park iravigulam national park as in kerala then we are coming to sanctuaries what are sanctuaries they are specially designed area where illegal interference is not permitted it is also specially designed area there uh, illegal interference illegal visit illegal uh, pouching all or uh, not allowed here killing or capturing are prohibited except under permission from the authorities what about the number a number of sanctuaries in india 441 sanctuaries are present and uh, and this 28 tiger reserve is also there to protect the tigers important sanctuaries in india are periyar neyar peppara um, the peppara sanctuaries in kerala verandangal uh, bird sanctuary in tamil nadu all these are examples yeah. then coming to i am um, explaining you the difference between sanctuary and national parks very important you have to learn this for the examination the channel uh, chance for question um, what's the meaning sanctuary is a natural habitat owned by government or private agency that safeguards particular that's important particular species of birds and animals then coming to national parks Ah, uh, it conserve wild life. No, not much. That much giving specific uh, specificity to any particular type of animal. It is uh, giving a general conservation to a wild life over a large area. That is national park. What was of seen sanctuary animals, birds, insects, subtle subtly. And here, ah, uh, in the case of national parks, flora, fauna, landscape, historical objects, all these are are protected. 
what is the objective of sanctuary to make sure that a viable population of the wildlife and their habitats are maintained. It's almost say um, regarding national park to project or sorry to protect the natural and historic objects and wildlife of an area. Um, somewhat uh, same objective for sanctuaries and national park. Then regarding restriction, there comes some difference. Sanctuary, the restrictions are less and is open to public. But national parks highly restricted. And uh, random access to people is not allowed. There is no random visits to this place. Not ran uh, random visits are um, um, yeah, what encouraged here. Uh, regarding official permission for visiting sanctuary, not required. But for national park, it is required. Uh, regarding sanctuary boundaries not uh, fixed but uh, national parks the boundaries are fixed by legislation uh, human activity also i have already told allowed but to a certain extent in sanctuary but in national park is not at all allowed okay then coming to forests in india forest cover of india uh, how much that cover is 70 million hectares uh, and that 70 million hectares means it occupies 20 to 20.74 percentage of country's geographical area is covered by forests types of forests tropical rainforest temperate deciduous forest himalayan subtropical pine forest is there indian tidal or mangrove forest is there Eastern Highland moist deciduous forest is there moist deciduous forest is there dry deciduous forest is there these are Different, 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 different types of forests in India. First, we are going to see about the tropical rainforest. It is commonly called lowland equatorial evergreen rainforest. It is commonly tropical rainforest is uh, commonly called lowland equatorial um, as it is located somewhere near two equatorial regions. That's why lowland equatorial evergreen. It's almost green throughout the year. Evergreen rainforest. Physiological features, heavy showers, is having heavy showers, 400 to 600 centimeter per year. So it is named as rainforest and the soil condition is poor soil due to high leach out because as there is huge rain, most of the uh, fertility of the soil is leached out or washed out. So poor uh, soil uh, fertility is poor. Average temperature is 26 degrees Celsius and also there is no clear cut dry or cold weather. Other features, high species diversity is here and more medicinal plants are here. This is somewhat the appearance of a tropical rainforest. Uh, next, we are going to see a video about uh, the, the tropical uh, forest. I will show you that. Imagine. And now, a hundred million years have passed. The dominance of two fantastic era, tropical rainforests have begun. This rainforest is then dominated by broad-leaved evergreen trees that we always see in, the, in that video. Common flora are coffee, chocolate, banana tree, papaya tree, avocados, etc. Temperate deciduous forest. Uh, regarding the flora, plants, uh, what, what's the nature of the plant? They are composed of trees with broad leaves. Broad leaves are present, broad leaf trees are present. And uh, deciduous forest types, deciduous forests are, are of two types, temperate deciduous forest and tropical deciduous forest, two type of uh, forest. Temperate deciduous means having moderate temperature and rainfall with a, a cold wind. 
and uh, most of the species uh, drop their leaves in autumn season so that's about temperate deciduous they have moderate temperature and uh, called winters and uh, the tree species will uh, shed their leaves in autumn season then regarding tropical deciduous they shed their leaves in december december means when water is scarce Uh, in that tropical the series forest rainfall is in range of 100 to 200 cm in india and uh, have a very distinct cut dry and uh, rainy season then coming this about uh, this one this a uh, nice picture is given here temperate the series forest picture and um, it uh, drops leaves in uh, autumn season and tropical the series is this one it shed leaves in december Okay, rainfall and uh, is dry. All these things. Next, uh, I'm going to show another video of tem uh, regarding this temperate deciduous forest. The temperate deciduous forest is a beautiful biome famous for four seasons, and many of the trees in this forest lose their leaves each winter. Take a look at the deciduous forest. The deciduous forest can be found in the eastern half of the United States, Canada, Europe, parts of Russia, China, and Japan. The soils in the deciduous forest are very fertile. As a result, you will find broadleaf trees such as oaks, maple. Here, the soil is very fertile. Um, when compared with the tropical rainforest, uh, there we uh, understand that the soil fertility is very poor. But here. So it is fertile. Maples, beeches, you will find shrubs, herbs, and a large variety of other organisms, such as insects, spiders, slugs, frogs, turtles, and salamanders. You will also find some birds like hawks, owls, and even woodpeckers. You also will find mammals there. Mammals such as white-tailed deer, raccoons, possums, black bears, and maybe even a red fox. If you take a look at the climograph for the deciduous forest, you will notice that this biome receives around 50 inches of rainfall a year and has warm summers and a moderate winter. A defining factor of this biome is four seasons. Take a look at the four seasons of a deciduous forest. The average rainfall in this forest is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Summers are between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and winters range from 0 to around 50 degrees. So there we go, a biome known for four seasons. That's a Next, we are going to see about the tropical deciduous forest. Tropical deciduous forest. These are the most widespread forests of India. They are also called the monsoon forests and spread over the region receiving rainfall between 200 cm and 70 cm. Trees of this forest type shed their leaves for about 6 to 8 weeks in dry summer. about tropical deciduous forest okay next uh, himalayan subtropical pine forest himalayan subtropical pine forest what is its coverage uh, okay it is covered from its range is extended from bhutan india nepal and pakistan its feature is given here at about this feature say uh, subtropical coniferous forest coniferous forests uh, the the shape appearance of trees is somewhat cone shape and high diverse fauna and flora is present in this type of forest then we are going uh, to next type forest that is indian tidal or mangrove the name implies is rich with mangrove 
and its location is in gangetic delta regarding what is gangetic delta i already explained to you and in coastal plains in west bengal called sundarban uh, somewhat uh, located almost here itself and uh, what's the features it is submerged uh, largest mangrove forest in the world and uh, mangroves are uh, the very uh, very thick very more here mangrove area are areas of great ecological importance of here there's a, the, about the indian tidal or mangrove forest the eastern highland moist deciduous forest uh, this type of forest was a feature it is uh, tropical and uh, is uh, full of broad leaved trees so broad leaf forest its coverage regarding its coverage uh, is as the extension of 341100 square kilometer extending from andhra pradesh chatisgarh jharkhand madhya pradesh maharashtra and orissa states as about its coverage and i'll uh, show you that uh, image of the eastern highland moist deciduous forest moist deciduous forest this is the somewhat appearance of this forest uh, next moist deciduous forest moist deciduous forest is occurrence is uh, found throughout india except in western and northwestern region uh, except this region here yeah, this forest is found throughout india what about its range uh, its uh, extent from western side of deccan plateau the northeast part of deccan plateau and the lower slopes of the himalayan mountain uh, on the shivalik hills from jammu in the west to the west bengal in the east that's about range you just need to read and understand keep it in mind the range of this most deciduous forest regarding the flora uh, the trees with a broad trunk uh, uh, very thick uh, very uh, fatty trees are from, um, present here they are all tall and branching trunks and roots to hold them firmly and dominant species are mango bamboo and rosewood here it's a picture of uh, moist deciduous forest then coming to dry deciduous forest dry deciduous forest is uh, occurrence throughout the northern part of the country except in the northeast what about its range its range from madhya pradesh to tamil nadu flora uh, is uh, the trees of here will not exceed uh, beyond 25 meter tall dominant species are teak sandalwood mango etc next i am going to show you a video about this dry deciduous forest you can uh, see that now ஒன்னோட்டிபிகேஷன் The certification means it's a transformation of fertile land to a completely desert type. Uh, and this is mainly because of drought or in appropriate agricultural practices. So what is this desertification? What is the definition? Uh, fertile land is transformed to desert typically due to the certification dry or uh, drought or inappropriate agriculture. reasons are uh, climatic changes are there and also human activities are also responsible for that main causes we are uh, underlining over cultivation uh, over cultivation uh, cultivation of a uh, in a area or a geographical area or a area will result in the depletion of the nutritional level of that area and also over grazing over removal of vegetation cover that also may transform a uh, vegetated greeny area to a desert uh, very fast itself then control measures control measures how can we prevent this desertification how we can protect a greeny uh, area uh, without becoming a desert uh, we can uh, build shelter belts shelter belts these are a type of shelter belts line of trees or shrubs planted to protect an area especially a field of crops is shelter belt it's a line of 
trees or shrubs. Then Andy sand shields also there. Andy sand shields also means with uh, using sand, sand are heaped in this um, uh, form of belt and protect the uh, siltage or uh, um, washing out of soil. Uh, this is another form of protective measure. Then wood loads. Wood loads means again it is uh, somewhat similar to this one, um, but here uh, don't plants trees are planting. Wood plant wood load is a parcel or array of uh, forest. And, and those trees that we are planting uh, as a border, as a belt, uh, it, it is again a source of uh, small scale production of forest products like um, uh, some uh, firewood or uh, some other uh, some other things we is possible to obtain out of those plants that we used to plant as a belt to protect the land area. So, two uses. We can uh, protect that land area and also at, at the same time, we can benefit, benefit out of these trees because of many different uses. Uh, that is called wood loss. Only one difference. Instead of a small shrubs, uh, we are planting tall uh, trees itself. Wood loss. Uh, that's uh, uh, that one. Then wind breaks also there. Wind breaks also um, somewhat uh, similar to the other uh, type we already discussed. This planting um, usually made up of one or more rows of trees or shrubs planted in such a manner to provide shelter from wind and also to protect soil from erosion. Uh, African great green wall is an example. It's a great green wall means uh, such a type of belt formed of um, thick. Uh, thickly uh, planted trees and uh, its cover is extend from uh, Senegal to uh, Djibouti. Uh, deforestation. Deforestation uh, also an important part. Uh, the, this deforestation and the certification. Uh, these two are very frequently asking question for your examination. So that's important and simple also. Uh, deforestation means it is an indiscriminate removal of forest cover or vegetation of an area. That is reforestation. What is the reason for deforestation? For uh, repeat uh, uh, loping means cutting of trees, felling, then annual removal of forest litter, browsing, grazing, etc. Industrialization, urbanization, commercial plantation. All oh, these are the reasons for deforestation. In history, if we are going, if we are moving through the history, we can found that in 1907, uh, was, uh, in 1900, what is the coverage of tree forest? 7,000 million hectares. In 1976, it reduced to 2,890 million hectares in in, uh, in 2000, it again reduced to 2,370 million hectares. So, it is not increasing. That dwindling um, trend we are we are visualizing here. So as we pass through the history, uh, worst affected forest uh, is a tropical rainforest. It is reduced from 1,600 million hectares to only 938 hectares now. It's very drastic. So India has been losing 10 million trees every 24 hours. Very pathetic. Uh, how much 10 million trees we are losing uh, every 24 hours. Then causes of deforestation. Uh, agricultural practices um, because unscientific and uh, unlogic practice, agricultural practices is main reason and that will uh, continue, continuously if we are cultivating, cultivating uh, in a particular area and also um, result in nutrient depletion due to that over cultivation as one cause. Then uh, due to the uh, launching of developmental projects like hydroelectric project, dams that also will remove a vast area of forest. And for fuel requirement also we loop or cut trees that also remove a vast area of forest. Uh, for obtaining raw material for industry, for that also we are exploiting our forest cover, for, especially for paper, matchbox industry. Then other causes also there, like uh, floods, forest fire, then natural enemies, diseases, overgrazing, mining is there, urbanization also another cause. 
um then so during vietnam war um because a huge level of destruction happens to cause vietnam um, war mediated destruction uh, was an example for uh, the force station large scale force station what happened during vietnam war us military personnel uh, sprayed a herbicide called agent orange it is a herbicide capable to defoliate the leaves of trees and plants Uh, why they did that because uh, they sprayed that heavy said only to see to uh, visualize their enemy soldiers that hide in between the trees by spraying this heavy said all the trees will shed their leaves and they lose its greenery and that it, that makes very easy for the us military personnel to detect uh, to um, uh, spot their enemy troops is an example for human mediated human selfishness mediated deforestation as vietnam war mediated destruction impacts of deforestation what are the impacts we are facing because a reduction in food space for wildlife that we are exper- experiencing very much during the, uh, the recent times because of many many wild animals like tigers are uh, encroaching the human settlements um, because we are uh, 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 what encroaching their territories that's why uh they are coming to human settlements and also uh, so much of their natural territories are uh, reduced because of the human interventions that is uh, one uh, impact of deforestation and atmosphere imbalance happens because um, the forests help to balance the um, oxygen carbon dioxide level that balance and also they eat uh, one of the main reason for giving a good rain uh what uh, that rainy season for distributing uh, for giving a good shower uh, for that also trees uh, forest coverage is a very important factor and also soil erosion uh, increased because uh, there is no enough trees to hold enough soil so soil erosions are there floods are there uh then um, because as there is no enough trees to hold the soil siltage happens soil soil coverage move to the rivers and reservoirs and uh, the depth of rivers and reservoirs are reduced so much humidity temperature rainfall all comes down then water resource, uh, resources have reduced soil fertility reduced and finally it may lead to desertification so are the impacts of deforestation next is carbon trading carbon trading means is a removal of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere it's an attempt done by many countries to remove uh, or reduce the greenhouse gases level in the atmosphere so in kyoto protocol uh, the industry industrialized countries decided to um, reduce the level of greenhouse emission between the years of 2008 and 2012 to a level to a 5.2 percentage uh, less when compared to the level that is uh, marked in 1990 1990 whatever level detected or marked uh, from that level a 5.2 percentage reduction need to be attained uh, in in the year the year, year between 2008 and 2012 with respect to the greenhouse gases that is the carbon trading the which is the gas of prime concern is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a major gas that is responsible for causing the <coughs> green uh, important gas among the greenhouse gases that results in global warming so the carbon dioxide is the uh, gas of prime concern regarding with the carbon trading and it's mainly produced by burning of fossil fuels and also because of deforestation and to the measures which are the steps we can adopt to reduce the level of carbon dioxide through afforestation by right? and that means by planting trees uh, there's a uh, um, tree planting projects by um, I, I, and taking tree planting pro- projects that way also we can adopt carbon trading we can reduce the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere next importance of mangrove in coastal ecosystem what is mangrove mangrove means is a complex wetland ecosystem that is mangrove 
uh, it is a wide range of um, a gatherance of unrelated plants of medium heights, mainly of mangal trees. Uh, mangal means it is always called mangrove plants. Its common name is called is kandal card. Its coverage of the world surface only 0.37 percentage is there for this mangal or a kandal card. In Kerala, its range is of 50 square kilometer earlier. Uh, sorry, sorry. In Kerala, presently its coverage is 50 square kilometer. But in earlier condition, uh, earlier situation, we have 700 square kilometer. That much coverage of mangal uh, or mangrove forest. But uh, you now it is very much reduced. That is only 50 square kilometer. Um, regarding the physiological aspect, it is a saline area. What is importance? It is a buffer zone. Buffer zone means buffer means anything that uh, prevent or uh, a balance and uh, inequality. It uh, it uh, support any shock. A shock absorb. That means buffer. So uh, mangrove also acts as a buffer zone between land and sea to prevent it or to it guard the. Uh, land border it's um, uh, the land sliding it prevent the land sliding during the time of tsunami also this mangrove forest play a very role uh, important role in protecting the land area from tsunami big waves so it protect the coastal areas from erosion and also it trap the soil in between its uh, huge network of roots uh, and also it um, trap the sediments and may, and in that way it nourish and keep the fertility of the soil. Uh, so it, it is fertilized and enrich the coastal areas. And offers a breeding house or nursing ground for many fishes, many other organisms, prawns. And also it serves as a source of fiber. Conservation and management. How can we conserve the mangrove? I mean to replenish mangroves, we need to replant the mangroves, prevent waste disposal in the mangrove area and also um, we need to start the uh, nurseries for planting of nurser nurseries for uh, 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 growing up mangrove or plants and also restrict fishing activity in the mangrove area. Why? Because uh, in mangrove area that fish that spawn is mainly of uh, is fingerlings, fish uh, small is baby fishes, it's fingerlings. So by fishing in mangrove uh, may uh, sweep away or uh, is, uh, uh, totally devastate a particular species of species there stands for that. So that's why we need to prevent fishing activity in mangrove areas. And also regular monitoring and patrolling by the authorities is very essential in the mangrove areas to prevent all illegal and uh, devastating activities there. And also we need to create awareness among the people regarding the importance of mangroves. Okay, with this we finish this chapter. Thank you.